Hello, welcome back to Watch You Need the Historian. Uh, in today's video, I will be continuing on with my video I made sometime last week, which was about strange historical facts. And I said that was part one. So today I'm making part two. So anyways, let's just jump right into the strange facts. So the first one is that Martin Van Buren was the only U.S. president who didn't speak English as his first language. He spoke uh, Dutch because he grew up in New York. And at the time, it was like a Dutch-speaking area because like eventually, it was original, like New York was originally a part of the Netherlands. It was originally colonized. It was called New Amsterdam. Uh, it was very, very Dutch, and even after the Dutch left and the British took it over, there was still a lot of Dutch culture and influence there, so a lot of people still spoke Dutch, and eventually English just kind of wiped it out, and now English is spoken there more, but like you, I don't think there's anyone in the New York who still speaks Dutch unless... They just came here during, like, the immigration period. Is that what it's called? Ah, whatever. And <laughs> then on to the next fact. So Pepsi once had the largest uh, military, or not the largest, but the fifth largest military in the world. This was back in, I want to say, 70s, 80s, 90s. And this was because of Gorbachev. He was the leader of the Soviet Union, and he liked Pepsi a lot. So uh, he wanted to get Pepsi into the Soviet Union, but Russian currency wasn't widely accepted. So he did the most stereotypical Russian thing, and he originally started trading vodka for Pepsi. And it started working, but eventually started realizing we're running out of vodka. We don't have enough vodka to give to Pepsi. So they started just, like just giving them military equipment and ships and planes and other stuff that I don't think you should give to a soda company, but whatever, it worked. And now Pepsi is in Russia, so whatever. <laughs> uh, <coughs> the next fact is about... Albert Einstein, and he was actually offered to become the president of Israel, uh, even though he wasn't actually a citizen of Israel. He was just like a, another guy who, um, well, he wasn't just another guy. He was one of the smartest human beings ever, but he was, he wasn't a part of Israel, so he declined, but I wonder what Israel would just would look like if Albert Einstein actually became the president of Israel uh, after he was offered. And um, on to the next fact. So <clears throat> this one's about Joseph Stalin. I think everyone knows who that was. Uh, so Joseph Stalin often retouched photos to get rid of people who'd been removed, to say. I think... You know what I mean by removed. We're talking about Stalin here. Uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I've seen some of the photos. It's actually kind of disturbing seeing photos with someone. And then suddenly you see the picture where just, there's just someone missing because he had them killed. Like, it's very disturbing. But uh, the next fact is that the shortest war in history was the Anglo-Zanzibar War. It was a war fought between Great Britain and Zanzibar, which is now Tanzania. Uh, and mm, I don't think this is a surprise. The British won, and it only lasted 38 minutes, which is very a very short amount of time, especially for a war. Uh, then the next fact is that there was an Omaha Indian, Chief Blackbird, who loved his horse so much that he was buried on top of it. Uh, 
which I think is interesting. Native Americans are very interesting. Like, I don't think they get enough appreciation in the U.S. Um, but on to the next fact. So, Rasputin, he was a Russian peasant. I assume you know who he is, but if you don't, look him up. Maybe. I'm probably going to make a video about him, too. So Rasputin survived being poisoned, shot, and stabbed before he was finally drowned in the Volga River. He had a very gruesome death. However, it was just so strange and it interesting how it took him so long to die. Like, <laughs> yeah, but um, on to the next fact. So this one's about Winston Churchill, and it's a very short fact. So Winston Churchill smoked... 8 to 10 cigars a day, which is not healthy, <laughs> which it kind of explains how he died. I'm pretty sure he died from some lung disease, probably like cancer or something. But uh, yeah, on to the next fact. During the Great Depression, people would wear flower sacks because, well, if you're poor, that is probably the most practical thing to wear. So they were wearing flower sacks and a lot of uh, companies and distributors saw this and they were like, what if we decorated the flower sacks so they could look nice while they're wearing flower sacks? Because it generally doesn't look nice to just go around wearing a flower sack. So <laughs> they started decorating them, which I think is pretty sweet. That's like, I just think it's a very nice thing to do for like the entire uh, the entire day of America. <laughs> but um on to the next fact. The Choctaw tribe, which is a Native American tribe, uh helped Ireland during the Irish potato famine. And they even have a statue in Ireland dedicated to the Choctaw. And it was actually built quite recently, but I don't know. I just think it's interesting that native, the things that Native Americans have done outside of the U.S. and Canada and other uh, countries in the Americas, I think it's quite interesting what they've done on an international scale. Uh, <clears throat> so the next fact is about William Walker, who is a man from Tennessee. Uh, I've got the flag of Tennessee right here. I'm from Tennessee. So... Uh, yeah, but William Walker was a man from Tennessee who actually raised a private army and colonized Nicaragua. Now, you might ask, why did he colonize Nicaragua? Uh, he just was into American imperialism, I guess. But um, his idea was to set up an, Amer an English-speaking colony, not an American-speaking colony. Sorry. <laughs> uh an English-speaking colony in in um, Central America that would one day get annexed by the U.S. But for now, but uh, when he was alive, he wanted to have full authority over it. And then he hoped that after he died, uh, the U.S. would annex it and it would become a state or something. And um, yeah, that's. I think he deserves a video. He was very a very strange and interesting character. So, the next fact that I have is the last dictator of Louisiana, or I don't think I should say the last dictator of Louisiana. I should probably say that Louisiana had a dictator. Louisiana had a dictator back in the 1930s, and his name was Huey Long. I think I'm pronouncing that right, but... I might be pronouncing it terribly wrong. And he was a dictator of Louisiana back in the 1930s. And I actually heard somewhere that he actually didn't do much that was bad. But of course, if you're a dictator who has complete control of, well, not a country, but a U.S. state, then of course you're going to become a controversial figure. So on to the next fact. The last public execution by guillotine was filmed, but it was like it's it was also in the 70s. So, yeah, that's kind of scary that back when they were making like Star Wars movies and stuff, 
France was still cutting people's heads off in public. Just not nice. Um, so on to my last and final, I was la my on to my last fact. There was a plague. This was back in medieval times, of course, because every plague was back then. Uh, there was a plague that made people dance until they died, which is kind of scary. Well, it's not kind of scary. It is scary. But, yeah, that it, like, it's still being asked how it happened. And I'm not, I don't think there's a, there's actually an explanation for it yet. But, uh. Yeah, that concludes my video. So, I'm probably going to make a video about all these facts. But um anyways, stay tuned. Uh like and my like my video, subscribe to my channel, click the bell, and um anyways, see you in my next video. Goodbye.